So for today's show, first thing we'll do is a 15 or 20 minute presentation, and then we will play some games. So we're going to do our fourth presentation on the Norwegian rat, but eventually we will move on to Rookin games, maybe look at the accelerated, especially the hyper accelerated dragon, maybe the London system, Tory attack, a number of different things. And here in the U.S., you know, they've been much further behind many of the other countries as far as giving aid. I mean, to date, I think they dealt out one $1,200 check. I mean, how is $1,200 going to last people for like six or seven months, you know, where they're out of work and so forth, you know? And so, uh, <clears throat> the, uh, I mean, I, I've been fortunate, you know, that, of course, chess has had an online boom. And so at my school, a lot of things Server have been Server announcement. And so, uh, eventually, they did renew all my contracts for another year. And so, I've been very fortunate in that respect. But, yeah, definitely a lot of people, you know, struggling, you know, with the uh, whole job situation. Okay. Now, all of the above said, we're going to go ahead and take a look. Now, what we do here is we go to View. We go to uh, My Profile. Here we have General which is our most recently played games. And then we have games. Okay, and so this is our game library. We now have eight games. Tonight we will cover seven and eight. We'll start with Navarro versus Sailor. Okay, and these are the games that we will be looking at. Now we'll flip the board and take, take a look here. Okay, so E4, G6. And now the very provocative Knight F6 the Norwegian Rat, brought to light by our great world champion, Magnus Carlsen. So knight c3. A lot of players don't want to play accept the challenge of playing e5, even though that is a bit more aggressive, and they play knight c3. Good, solid choice. Developing a piece, protecting the center. So now, of course, if black wanted to just play d6, eh, the play might head to Peerts. White still has the option of a three pawns versus the Peerts. And, but with d5, it has a decidedly Norwegian rat uh, independent flavor, or as Magnus Carlsen himself called it, the quasi-rat. So anyway, now knight to e4. That's the centralizing move. That's the move that Kasper, uh, <clears throat> Magnus Carlsen helped to validate. In the old days, they would play knight h5 and usually just get uh, abused after moves like g4, knight g7, bishop h6, and so forth. So anyway... Here the opponent again also plays knight takes, pawn takes. Now last week we looked at two games with the very aggressive bishop to c4. And this week, let's see what we have on tap. We have g3 in one game. Okay, g3. This time they want to play bishop g2 and go after the pawn. So when you play this opening for black, if you ever dare to play this opening for black, you have to always be cognizant of that pawn up there on e4 being a little weak. However, the flip side of the coin, as usual in chess, there are pluses and minuses, is that it takes white a few tempi to round it up. And while white is rounding it up, black presumably should be developing his pieces and creating counterplay. So, let's see what happens in this situation, in this game. Well, c5, immediately striking at the center. Now, in some ways, the immediate strike at the center makes a lot of sense because the bishop, once white played g3, he's already kind of committed to either sending the bishop that way or having weaknesses on the light squares. So otherwise, against other normal moves, bishop g7 first sometimes, and then c5. So let's see what happens. White reinforces the pawn. c3, very typical thing. Pawn takes. Now pawn takes sometimes is a bit premature because in later moments, you might be given this knight from e2 access to the c3 square. Pawn takes. Knight c6, you can see the two pawns are under attack, and now bishop to e3, bishop to f5, bishop to g2, check, and the check. Now the check is slightly disturbing, because how does white really interpose? He could play queen d2, then you could contemplate castling, followed by, I mean, trading queens followed by castling, and you already have pressure. And then you could also play an e6 
and chip away at these two pawns in the center. So, in this game, black elects to go bishop back to d2. Then queen d5. So you can see black has made a lot of progress toward guarding the pawn on e4 and blockading the backward d4 pawn. Server announcement. And now, striking before white can get mobilized, rook to d8. Just piling on the pawn on d4. Well, knight e2 protects the pawn, develops a piece. In general, in the opening, it's uh, almost always a good idea if you can meet the opponent's tactical threats and develop a piece. That's usually the right idea. Well, now bishop g4 pins said knight and contemplates an exchange of prisoners. You might get the guy on d4, he might get your guy on e4. White castles. Well, we've already mentioned that white castles is a horrible hamburger chain in the northeast, so we won't mention that. But now bishop h6. Very interesting. We know this knight in some cases wants to come to <clears throat> f4 to bounce the queen. So with bishop h6, you take away squares from the white queen, and you also contemplate chopping that knight if needed. Well, here, queen to c2. Okay, now what? Aha, the pawn on e4 is under attack from the white queen and the bishop. Okay, but insert bishop. Now, he plays rook over. Castles. What's not to like? Black has managed to do the three things you do in the opening that I teach my kids. A, fight for the center. B, develop your pieces. And C, secure your king. Success on all three accounts for the black team here. And I guess white could play a move like rook to d1 or something. In the game, he plays here to offer trade queens. And I should follow the advice that I give my kids. It's not he plays here. He plays queen to b3. Queen to b3 challenges queens and contemplates possibly taking the pawn on b7. Although there might be tactical tricks associated with that. In the game, Sailor played e3. The point being that on queen takes queen, he can throw in pawn takes pawn check first, if he wants. As opposed to just leaving the pawn up there where it might get overextended. And then he guarantees that black will be, uh, white will be left with a backward pawn on the open d-file. A small edge, to be sure. Well, white took the bishop. It would have been better to trade queens. But now queen takes, and white has problems. Actually, I think white's just simply lost. He doesn't have anyone to guard the f2 square with, except the rook on e1. But the rook on e1, first off, would run into pawn takes pawn check, rook takes, and bishop e3. And secondly, the rook on e1 is charged with the obligation of defending the knight on e2. Well, here, after pawn takes pawn, bishop checkmate. takes pawn check. Yes, checkmate does in the game. So amazing. Yet another miniature victim for the Norwegian rat. And I have to be honest, when I first saw Magnus Carlsen playing this opening, I thought, oh, this is a pile of it. This is nonsense. He's just having fun. But then I realized, maybe there's a little more to it than meets the eye at first glance. So let's go back to my profile. We'll go back to our games list. Okay, so all eight of these games are in the Norwegian Rat, and the first six are published in three separate videos on YouTube. And they're also published uh, on the ICC network inside the uh, banter blitz during which they were presented. So now the next game. Here we get a much more formidable opponent, rated 2266 with a master ranking. Okay. Ah, uh, Boudere, hello from Jacksonville. Hello. Uh, if we're chilly down here in South Florida, I can only imagine what you guys are going through up in North Florida. And uh, thinking back to uh, Eddie Murphy and uh, Dan Aykroyd in uh, Trading Places, uh, the orange crop might be a little, little uh, chilly this year, right? <laughs> so, 
I think that was a big theme that they were waiting for the weather report on the orange crop. Boudre says one dollar. Uh -huh. Okay. Now the next game we're going to look at. Let's take a look. Okay. So again, the very provocative knight f6, the Norwegian rat. In fact, when I first started playing this opening, it took me a while to force myself to play knight f6 because I just instantly wanted to put the bishop on g7 because that's what I'd done for 15 years. Okay. But knight f6. Knight f6, what can we say about it? It's, uh, it's pushing the envelope. Okay, you are allowing white to occupy the center, but it's kind of a hybrid between the modern opening, the Al Yekin's defense, and sometimes you might get like a center counter flavor. Sometimes you might get kind of a French defense type structure with the inclusion of the G6 move. So it's got kind of its own unique flavor, but depending on how white plays, it could take on the flavor of some of these other openings that, you know, have been around much longer and are much more, quote, reputable. So in a way, that's one of the pluses about it is they can't just go look up and find the latest Kramnik game, uh, How to Crush the Rat. So anyway, continuing on, knight to c3 again, and d5. On to e5. Knight comes into e4. Now, of course, here white has a whole number of moves. Several games, bishop d3 is a very, very popular move. In fact, I think Krunk's Lannister and maybe the first or second game we played, played bishop d3. Uh, f3 is possible, but probably not to be recommended. Simply knight f3, bishop e3, uh, putting either of the knights on e2. All of this has been played, but again, one of the more principal tries is to exchange knights and then try to go after the e-pawn. That's probably one of the more challenging approaches that white could take. Okay, now here, jij, being a master, plays c3, safety first. Good policy. He wants to secure his pawn chain and then think about how he wants to place his pieces. Okay, so c5. Sailor immediately goes for the counterplay. Now, I might have thought to play bishop g7 first because white does have some options here with bishop to b5 check. Not that they're the end of the world, but just they are options. Well, pawn takes a very interesting approach. And so now the structure actually reminds me very much, after queen Check. takes, king takes, of the c3 Sicilian, the Alapin Sicilian. There's a variation with 6, d takes c5 that, frankly, I've actually had a bit of Server success with over, announcement. The over the years. Because when you play uh, d takes c5, black can either try to recoup the pawn or trade queens and then try to recoup the pawn. Okay, so Massey, hi GM, Ron, I would like to play with you. Okay, so we're going to be open challenges after, okay? Right now, uh, as soon as we finish this presentation, and basically you just have to match... Uh, what is the command there? Uh, basically, you just have to challenge hen chess to like 5-0 or 3-0, okay? But anyway, look forward to it, Mr. Massey. So let's see. So now what's the story? Yes, black needs to get his pawn back. And the queens are off the board. However, the white king is a little displaced. Okay. So, as we said, give and get. Okay, now f4. Now that's an interesting move. And the computers here actually would like black to play bishop to f5. And they babble something about equality. I mean, maybe you could play f6 later, chip away at their pawns. I kind of like what Sailor did here. He went ahead and he took that pawn. No, he did play bishop f5 first. Maybe I'm thinking of another game. White develops a piece and says, hey, I'm holding on to the c5 pawn. What you got, buddy? Check. Well, development. I mean, black has three units out and secured his king, and white has one piece out. King up. And now, very dynamic move. What you cannot do here with black is just sit there and let white develop all his pieces. Say, for a Hemplio, oh, bishop to b5, knight to e2 some rook to d1, and start trading pieces. That's just the recipe for slow or not so slow death. So, when you sacrifice material, it does behoove you. Unless you're an artificial intelligence machine that can just sacrifice material and play another quiet 40 or 50 moves building your position. But short of that, for us humans, it kind of behooves us to go ahead and play aggressively. So I like what Sailor does. He says, hey, 
before Wade gets mobilized and organized and all that good stuff, let's counterattack. Now, of course, if pawn takes pawn on g5, knight takes, or bishop g7, getting the pawn back in delayed manner, you know, is pretty active. Okay? So, white does a logical thing. Plays pawn to g3, reinforcing the pawn chain. But now pawn takes. Pawn takes. So what has black achieved? Well, he's created a target on f4. He's got a tactical threat of knight takes e5. And he's now opened the g-file, which could work out either way, except the fact that black is better mobilized and ahead in development means opening the g-file is more likely to favor him. Well, rook to e1, very good. Again, developing a piece from the corner, meeting the tactical threat of knight takes e5, pawn takes, because bishop takes, you have rook takes. So very high quality play by both sides. Well, pawn to e6. I think Sailor told me he was debating between this and between rook to g8. And he ultimately elected e6, because in some variations, he wanted his bishop to be secure. Well, now came, oh, for example, here. If knight to g e2, cutting the communication of the rook and the bishop, well, knight takes e5 is back on. And he didn't want to be in a situation where the guy goes knight to g3 attacking his bishop. I think that's how he explained it to me. So anyway, knight to h3, rook to g8. Rooks belong on open files. So again, what I really like about this game, it's really an excellent struggle. White has the extra pawn and the 4 to 2 queenside majority. Black has the extra pawn on e4, but is a pawn down. But that is a pass pawn, but it is also a target. But black also has full development and two rooks on the two open files. So yes, there's definitely this trade-off in chess between time, material, development, material, king safety, material. Well, here, knight f2. And we'll give you a second. Can you spot the breakthrough that black made at this point? Because again, you don't want to just let the guy develop everything. Play like bishop to c4 or pawn to b4 and start rolling those pawns. So when the moment is there, you have to be willing to strike. And here, Sailor went from just playing general principles and developing moves to going in for tactics. Yes, Kronk's Lannister scores. I guess he gets the dollar for bishop takes f4. Bam! Good point. Well, of course, this shatters the white pawn structure. He pretty much has to take. Otherwise, you're just going to have another one, and then you'll be a pawn up. So bishop takes, and then, of course, check. pawn to e3 check. But now the next part, what you had to see was that on knight to d3, scoring the piece, you had to see that you could play bishop check. takes check, bishop takes, and remember we talked about those rooks on open files. Bam. Check. Rook to g2 check, the piece comes back. If white blocks with the rook, you simply trade rooks, and rook to d2 check, and rook takes, you've got your pawn back, and you might even be a pawn ahead with a pretty powerful, you know, pretty active rook. Okay, still an end game to be played there, but definitely promising. So in the game, let's see what happened. Of course, if he goes bishop e2, then you just go rook d2 check, and rook takes bishop right away. So in the game, white fled with the king, and recaptured. So now what's the story? Well, black has now recovered his pawn. He's got two, four, six. White has 2, 4, 6, but again, the white rooks are still very active. The pawn on e3 is fragile, but now the pawn on e5 is also much more fragile. Let's see what happened. Bishop takes c3. Black decided he should eliminate that guy before white just presses on up to e2, after which it might be hard to get. Also, if you go back, black has a nasty threat to possibly play rook to d2, Rook at d3 to d2, and then just start power blasting along the rank. So for those reasons, bishop took the pawn. But now, give and get. Knight takes pawn. And rook over. And this is the move that white was counting on to get some pretty good play. 
I guess black could drop back with rook to d7, guard his pawn, because keep in mind for the moment black does have two connected pass pawns. I guess another option would be knight to g4, but then bishop d4, and you might have trouble defending these two central pawns. But I like what Sailor did here. He played the very nice move, king d7, very nice. This gives black two options. The king can go to c6 to activate that way. The king can also slide over to e7 or e8 and protect his two connected pass pawns. Well, the move that white was relying on was bishop to d4. This looks quite promising. If the knight moves, bam, rook comes crashing in on f7. What to do? But here, sailor showed knight to f3. And what I like about this is sometimes I talk to my students about color control. And that's a subject that's not really touched upon so much. But if you think about it, in this endgame, you have two rooks and knight against two rooks and bishop. But what color is the bishop? The bishop is a dark squared bishop. Well, is it by accident that white has camped out all his pieces on the light squares? Which always reminds me of that rapper, dee 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 dee, you can't touch this. And so the bishop can't touch the white pieces, okay? And it seems like an accident, but then on the other hand, if you study the games of players like Karpov, Karpov was definitely a light square player. Players like Kasparov and players that play the King's Indian defense tended to be more like dark square players, okay? And so when you study Karpov's games, it's just time and time again, it almost seems like magic. Suddenly all his pieces are on light squares. Okay, so that's the general strategic theme. But let's talk about the specific tactics. Well, this knight f3 is a nasty move. It threatens the rook on e1, it threatens the bishop on d4 with check, and it masks off the attack from the f1 rook to the f7 pawn. Very nice coordination. Okay, so let's see. What did white do? He's in. And for bonus question, you actually threaten a little nasty potential knight to d2 check possibility. Okay, so this knight on f3 is a monster. White obviously, you know, missed how powerful it was. And then finally, the other point, when white tries to hold it together with king to c4 by counterattacking the rook, well, here's the newsflash. Knight takes, and the knight even protects the rook on d3. Well, after rook takes, doubling rooks, rook to f1, and f5, I think at this point, white decided to toss in the towel. Black is just simply the exchange up. It's five pawns to five, and more pawns probably are falling on the seventh rank. But the worst part of it is, is white doesn't even really have serious counterplay. I mean, moves like rook g4 taking advantage of the pin, rook take b2 or a2 is going to give black a three-point material advantage. So there's an excellent game of very good play on both sides, but yet the Norwegian rat still putting up Resistance after knight e4, knight takes, pawn takes, and then c3. The very excellent c5 was met by pawn takes, queen takes, and then knight c6 with a very sharp queenless middle game where black was able to generate counterplay. Okay, that pretty much concludes our presentation on the Norwegian rat for today. Game started. And game on. Now, yeah, did I play Massey earlier today? I, I think I may have. I was logged on earlier. I played a few games, I think. Oh, very, very good variation for black. I mean, for, for white. This one takes d4. Now, this is a little different how he's playing it, though. He's got the possibility of bishop h6. So he's kind of backing into a Yugoslav attack formation. Very interesting. Should we play an early queen a5? I just feel like if I play bishop h6, maybe we'll play like this. I feel like if I play bishop h6, he's just raring for a Yugoslav attack. Now the only difference is his knight is way back there. Do we want to let him take our bishop? 
But if we don't, he's coming knight to d5. Decisions, decisions. Not sure that's the brightest idea. Yeah, totally not thrilled with this, I must confess. What am I doing? Why I didn't play knight c4 last move? He's coming! Check. And there, not totally sure why I, would, I didn't take that with the bishop. And when I figured out. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Where is he going? Check. I don't know how bright that was. How are we doing on time? Yep, that's truly annoying. The king is in the box.
Well, that's fascinating. In game. And by the way, for ICC about three or four years ago, five or six years ago, seven or eight years ago, I did a 13-volume uh, set on double rook in games. And it's amazing, the re uh, not double rook in games, rook in games, period. And of course, double rook in games are kind of a typical thing that can happen. Incoming challenge. Oh, good game. Good game, sir. Uh, strange rookin' game there with my king boxed off and yours tied to the pawn. Okay, so Grandmaster Dave. Game started. JM. Oh, I, I missed Hunks Lannister. Hey, JMW. Jake's here. All right. Grandmaster Dave. Now, JMW, you can set up an account and uh, you can challenge to a game if you want, buddy. Let's play the two knights defense. But then what happens? You just wind up playing a Yoko Pianissimo with D3. Not the excitement we'd hoped for, but got to go with it. Now that's interesting. So I guess one possibility here is to chase down his bishop. Let's play this first. Maybe, maybe knight A5 is worth a shot. Yeah, JMW 200-200. Okay, good play there, Shakespeare. Ah, uh, let's stop that guy from coming in here. Now, his A3 move gives him two possibilities. One is to expand with B4, and the other is to a little hidey hole for his bishop. Okay, I guess I'm going to play it straight here and castle. Yeah, so these positions are very, very tough to really generate any real counterplay. Let's play over here, unnecessarily weak in the queen side. I saw Nakamura play this kind of position, and he did a great job, I think it was against Magnus, of advancing on the queen side to try and generate some counterplay. Now that's interesting that he put the bishop on b3 instead of on a2. So that's kind of white's most dangerous piece, not to say that others won't come along later, but... Dylan. Oh, Dylan is here as well. Uh, now, this is not clear to me why he needs to take on these weakened pawns, but now he wants to come in knight to f5. So maneuvering these two knights over to the king's side for white and for black is a typical idea. Somehow this is very reasonable for him, I must say. Not clear at all how we're going to create any kind of interesting imbalance. Maybe we can't. Well, now I guess we could pop up here. Make sure there's no tactic disaster looming. And we've got two hits on the F2 pawn. Oh, no, sir. You can't just let me munch in there, dude. Now, if I go with the knight, you might duck and, and I get trapped. So i got to go with the dish. Check. Yeah, rook F1, I think, was the... Uh, necessary or bishop e3 if you want to play that type of position but now i just come out with a little extra stuff here and i got something to play for okay Eat and run. Let's get out of there. I don't see anything else to do. Uh, Zevich, Zevich said thank you very much for the game. And uh, of course you're welcome, sir. Good game. So, Jake and Dylan, uh, 
Yeah, uh, you can go to the ICC homepage and get a Internet Chess Club membership, free membership for one month, and then you guys can challenge me if you like. Okay, now there, I think I need to snip that guy off before he gets too far up the board, if there's no tactic reason I shouldn't. Uh, well, let's just send up another envelope, another note from home. Uh, Sandro, could you please uh, type in the chat uh, how they can go and join the ICC and get that one month Check. membership? Now here, that exchange was prob Check. probably, it was definitely ill-timed because as you can see, Grandmaster Dave's king got very exposed there, kind of self-inflicted. Oh, JMW says he's creating a username. Okay. Okay, Grandmaster Dave says good game and challenge. Check, checkmate. Okay. Oh, Hanisian wants to play 3 0. Okay. Let me take a deep game breath and started. Bring, bring the A game. Hopefully, we can bring the A game. This guy has been a tough customer. Okay. So has he Norwegian ratted me? Yes, he has. That was a pretty funny joke there, dude. I used to do that with Karpov. We'd play an opening and play it from both sides. And, man, that is how you learn it. Ah, yeah, like you. I also forgot what Matt, Mickey Adams played against uh, Magnus Carlsen way back when. So as Magnus would say, this this is good. We're making him think. That's that's a plus. Check. So we won a piece, but of course our center got destroyed. I'm not clear what the future is for our king. But who was it said something about if you want to make an omelet, you got to break a few eggs or some such nonsense? That was pretty, pretty clever of him to get get me to show him some special sauce against my prized Norwegian rat. Very clever. Ah, now even more clever. He stops me from playing there. Okay, but. If you got an extra piece, you can afford some double pawns. Shouldn't be the end of the world, right? Ah, what am I doing? Knight, knight to d5. Come on, dude. What are you thinking? 
or are you? Good question. Anyhow, what are you complaining about? Oh, shoot. Now, now you're so upset about that, you allowed this. Ah, you turkey, you. And things were going so well, so well. And now I've mucked it up. Unbelievable. This guy has been so lucky against me. But he fights. Check. Check. Now, are you even anything ahead still? Check. Well, totally bungled that. Okay, so what's the body count? Two, four, six. Okay, but he's fighting back like nobody's business. Check. Living a little life on the edge here. I had a game once against Petrosian. Something like this happened in a Benko Gambit. Time warning. Check. Black forfeits on time. Oh boy. As always, sir, a real event there. And Mr. McKnight is here. <laughs> oh boy. Night A5. Good one. Good one, dude. And good idea there to see what I would do. I never expected you to play D5. You rat you. So I guess uh, we'll go ahead and play Grandmaster. Game he wants to started. Have white. Okay. What's he got? E4. Okay, why not? Let's play this. Okay, now let's go here. Head for the closed Sicilian. Let's see. I'm getting the Twitch video on my other monitor here. Uh, who was saying Dave the Champ? Okay. So, now, if you're watching the Twitch monitor while you're playing, are you, uh, are you listening to my commentary and taking my suggestions? That was one of the questions that Magnus had. Are they listening to what I'm recommending? Now, this, this looks very suspicious, I must say. Well, I don't have to say, but... I think it looks suspicious because the bishop on g4 does not have a lot of room. I'm going to be very greedy. Uh, my first thought was to play knight f6, but my second thought was to try and be really greedy and trap that puppy. I like my second thought better. Mm, okay, eat and run home. Okay, yeah, eat and retreat, as one of my kitties call it. Didn't see a good square along the h-file for the rook. And, JJ, it says you need a full membership. Uh, Sandro, they're having trouble getting the uh, thing to work there. They're not able to get the challenge. It says they need a full membership to challenge me. Is that some kind of setting there, Sandro? Well, let us not hang, hang this guy. So basically what we need to do here is the knight on f3 is stopping us from playing queen takes h2 mate. 
right? So we need to get rid of that guy by hook or crook. Whatever we can do to distract that puppy and then go in for the kill. Okay, and then we can do the checkmate. Checkmate. Once we got that knight out of the way. Incoming challenge. Uh oh. Got my hands full again here. Game started. We always have a tough game with this guy. Always. Guaranteed. He puts up a lot of resistance. In bad positions. And in good positions, he attacks like a maniac. Hmm. What am I doing? Okay. Now I see it. I mean, I spent so much money on eye surgery, I should have seen it right away. It was a very good move last move to play knight b5. And this is actually one of the dangers for black in this opening. This knight b5 business. That's why that makes this a little more dangerous than the normal London. Which, by the way, on the normal London, where you do the pawn triangle, this knight tends to be back on b1 and then go to d2 and tends to be one of black's, white's more difficult pieces. Uh, this is kind of how uh, Grandmaster Simon Williams explained it. And so, by contrast, the knight on c3, on the downside, it blocks in your c-pawn, so you're not able to set up your nice pawn triangle so easy. But on the upside, it has quite a bit more offensive firepower, okay? And I thought that was a great way of explaining it. And now here, we're going to see a very unique tactical situation where I think we call it Trappa da Dama. That's a tribute to our Italian internet friend, Sandro, Trappa da Dama. That's probably the uh, limit of my Italian. Maybe that and spaghetti. Oh, what am I doing? I could have just played pawn takes the stupid bishop. Because the uh, the thing was trapped. The queen was trapped. She wasn't going anywhere. Pawn takes bishop would have been cute. Oh well. Life goes on. I may get that bishop anyway. Okay, now we're going to play pawn takes the bishop. So... Check. Even with McKnight's tough resistance skills, I think this position may be a bit bit much for him, even. Although, he's still being annoying. Dang, he's still being annoying. If I go there, he can go there and there, and then he's going to get a second piece. If I go there, that's a little bit silly idea, but, you know... Holding on to an extra piece is worth a little trouble. Yeah, I wanted to play knight c3, then I realized he has knight e4, and then when I castle, he goes knight c3, hitting my queen, pawn takes, and bishop takes e2. Bam! You can never be too careful, even when you're winning, when you think you're winning. Tricks, tricks, tricks. At least now, I think, with the c4 mechanism, now it's my plan to hold on to the extra piece. Okay, I gave up the c4 pawn, but what's a pawn when you're holding on to a piece, right? Still says the fit feature you're attempting to use requires. So, Sandro, apparently they're still having trouble getting it to work. Okay, anyway, we are out of here. Castles. Although in such a rush to castle, why well, I didn't play a3 and freeze those guys? Slow them up at least. <laughs> yep. He's still coming, but at the end of the day, I don't think he should have enough for the queen here. I think he's only got like one knight, and there it is, right there. Okay, rook's in the game. Get that guy over here. Which again, why I didn't play knight there, but that's okay. 
So there's a feature you're attempting to use. It requires something. What's he up to now? Is this some kind of trick he's doing? If I take this, what's he doing to me? Some kind of take, take. I don't see it. Or I see it, I don't believe it. Yeah, he fell into a, uh, a bad variation there in this game. Okay, so now he might try some razzle-dazzle with the knights, but... Oh, I see. He could he could do a double double fork thing. But again, I'm a little skeptical. Even if he does. Not the end of the world. Okay, let's just go in here. Pack that guy. Yeah, I, I see the escape plan. Yeah, when he goes here... Let's threaten him on the e-file. And fortunately, he doesn't have time to steal my bishop. Check. Black resigns. Well, good game, sir. But uh, yeah, you, you kind of walked into one of the dangers here when you allowed this early knight b5. Once white's played e3, knight b5 is in the air. That's why some of those cool kids at the 2700 GM level play a6 early. But yeah, knight b5 here was really bad news. Okay, so uh, they're trying to get in there. And I'm a member very soon. Okay, so uh, ICC is asking you what client you're using. Are you downloading Dasher or Blitzen? Which one are you guys downloading? Or ICC for Windows? Which, uh, which one did you log in? Which one did you guys use? So... Anyway, thank you, Mr. McKnight's. Now, by the way, if you want to check out an, another stream, you have uh, McKnight's. Uh, Twitch.tv slash or dot McKnight's. And he's on at various hours, kind of depending on his work schedule. But he just loves to play chess. And as you can see, he's just playing to get better like all of us. So if you get a chance, check it out. And he pretty much plays all comers. Plays on a couple of different platforms, but primarily ICC. And if you think kind of his setup is kind of like Raiders of the Lost Ark, kind of that look. Or Outlaw Josie Wales. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Mr. McKnight's, for dropping by. Scroll up the stream, see who else has been here. Okay, is Buderay still with us? Or have you had to nod off to sleep? Okay, so Sandro says that uh, JM200200 needs to, you need to register for an account. So uh, Jake and Dylan, you actually have to go and register for an account and uh, you'll get a free one month membership. And let me know what your handle is, okay? And then you can challenge. Yeah, so yes, you can't play me as a guest. I guess that's uh, the, the point there. Uh, McKnight says that uh, they, they need to register for, for an account, you know, with, with your name and probably an email and so forth. So McKnight, are you up for a second game? You should get white this game. Okay. Yeah, that game was a little unfair. Server you, you announcement. Out the opening, sir. 
Okay, it says you see his account. He's incoming challenge. Okay, game on. Game started. Yep. Now he gets white this game. That's fair. Okay, let's go Sicilian and see what he's got. Everybody has their thing against the Sicilian defense. Now, this is pretty main line here. This is like super main line. In fact, bishop c4 is one of the best ways to play. Anand himself plays like this with the white pieces. Queen a5 was recommended by Roman Jinjin Hashvili and Lev Albert in Chess Openings Explained. Castles is, in fact, the best move. And Ivanchuk played it once and beat, was it Karjakin? J. Dobrik, hola. You got next, dude, if you send a challenge. Oh, now that's that's exciting. What's going on there? If I take the e-pawn, he can take on c6, take, take on e7, run away. All very exciting business. Do I have a choice? If I take on d5, he just takes or something, looks pretty boring. Doesn't look too thrilling, although possible. Don't see his knight on d4 would be big if I go away. So takes, takes, takes. Which way do you take? take that way maybe you take that way but then he takes he gets the two bishops you got rapid development but that one bishop is very good hmm well ron it's not a correspondence game i think uh you should think about moving somewhere along the way dude Hmm. That really is fascinating. I'll try to make it a more interesting game. Now, what, what was that check anime cartoon? Me and my buddies got together, and we were like, hey, let's make this more interesting. So we stopped playing chess. Anyway, the kids think that's funny. Now... Is there anything to be gained? I don't think so. so. Let's try to keep more pieces on the board. Try and make it more exciting. Who are we playing here? Mr. McKnight's. Mm -hmm. Mr. McKnight's. I remember a move that uh, Roman recommended once in some similar type position. Yeah, I don't know if it's so great here, but uh, let's try this for the moment. Roman actually, and I even played once in a U.S. Uh, <clears throat> amateur team, played this move uh, queen a6 once. Very interesting. You trade queens, you have these double day pawns, but you get play a la Benko Gambit down the A and B files. Not sure it's totally apropos here. This might just be a bad idea. Anyhow, now. Server announcement. Issues here.
Oh, I'm not sure if he should let us have that bishop so readily. Well, we got to guard this guy. Question is how. I may regret using this rook. So then don't use it. Use the other guy. Maybe I should be playing queen b6 there. Maybe b4 was exciting. Yes, we're all so smart after the fact. Hmm. Again, not sure about that because other issues. Exactly. Now we got to give up that guy. So we get this opposite colored thing. Well, let's see if we can trade these guys. That way it makes it a little more technical in nature. And... Ah, short on time. Gotta watch the time factor. Check. Check. Okay, let's build a wall. Not not to be political there. Oh, smart play, sacrificing that guy. That's trouble. Yeah, now we can get a pair of rooks off the board. Should make our life quite a bit easier, I hope. I hope. Now that guy's threatening to roll, rumble. Now if I'm lucky, the rook will be able to pick up both those guys and just make a little technical exercise. Can I take this guy? Drop back. I think we can do this. Ron, instead of thinking, you should analyze and be sure about such things. Nah. Okay, so I think the rook is showing who's boss. If he pushes, we've got to drop back. Then on bishop a6, we push. He queens, we take, take, queen check, picks off the bishop. Or pick off the pawn first and then try to pick off the bishop again. Anyhow, yeah, rook a8. That, that, that was good. Okay, so he's making me drop back and play some d. Let's go round up this guy. Okay. Take the file. Penetrate. Check. And that should be the story. Incoming resigns. Oh, I am JMW2020. Okay. Uh, 2 0. Holy cow. Okay. Game on, buddy. 2-0. Okay. Game, Game on. started. No time to mess around. Playing one of my students? Always got to remember what you did and didn't show them. Did you show them the good stuff? Of course we show them the good stuff. We want them to do well. But now in 8-B-5, kind of like what happened to McKnight's, is interesting. Now, McKnight's actually fell into this. In one game and he also found this uh, move which really made the game quite quite interesting I mean in theory white should have been a little better but never easy okay now I think we want a pawn on the deal but he does have bishops he's got bishops so it's never so easy now let's try to lock these guys in. No, nope, still not easy. And there.
Now we could have taken the pawn on d5, but I'm more concerned at this point about getting developed. And now I think I finally got what I want, which let's freeze this game. I'm on ICC for Windows and Mac. Okay, good. Now, let's put this guy here. Although, Bishop d3 had its moments. Okay, so now the game's become a bit technical because he does have the bishop here, but he does not have a great pawn structure. So it kind of becomes a bit of a battle of the... Okay, now we get that knight to the center of the board and we start to feel pretty comfortable about the situation here. Now we start focusing on his f5 pawn that's a bit fixed. And so in a blocked position, kind of like this, you can see that the bishop pair, not necessarily an advantage. Now he does have a massive array of stuff there lined up on us, but, oh, tricky guy. Okay, he, he wants to checkmate me, not nice, not nice. I think we better time to give up our bishop. Good good idea there, dude. Good idea. Okay, so he's playing for attack. Our light squares are a bit weak. That's a bit of a wussy move. Wow, he's still coming. He's coming. Oh, but he's short on time. Oh, I'm I'm, I'm like totally forgetting this is a two minute game. Okay. Well, let's get this guy. Get the rook open. Okay, let's chop that guy. Now in a minute, we're going to have to remind him he's got a key Black also. forfeits on time. Okay. Good game, sir. Uh, yeah, you ran into the Jobaba London, which we hadn't Server had discussed. Server announcement. But uh, yeah, too many game. I, I got so enthralled in the game there, I started forgetting about the clock until I saw your clock was short. But uh, good game. Thanks for, thanks for popping in and playing. Now, does Dylan want to try and get a game in? Oh, you're going to go help your brother. Oh, okay. Well, it's not basketball. Two on one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Anyway, make sure. Now, Dylan won a tournament last night, so uh, make sure he sends us a, a photo, okay? And uh, good game there after, after you know, you fell into the soup there. This knight b5, again, one difference between the regular London and the Jobaba London is that this knight gets to b5, it's much more active than the regular London, where the knight's back here on b1, you set up your pawn triangle, comes out to d2, much slower developing. This Jobava definitely has some quick strike potential. As Incoming challenge. Games. Grandmaster Dave again. Okay. Game started. He played really well last game. It was very unclear. Let's go Sicilian. People do this. It's funny because people buy all these books on uh, the Nidor, the Taimanov, the Polagayevsky, all these different favorite variations in the Sicilian. And then when you play on online, 70% of your games is probably anti Sicilians with the early bishop to c4 being pretty much at the top of the list. And why not? That way the player playing white gets a lot of experience playing his variation. So that's a very uh, reasonable thing to do. So eventually, whoa, dude, your bishop's attacked, Grandmaster Dov. I thought we'd talked about you know, looking at peace captures last week. Now, you did better this week, but still, you can't just give away free pieces and expect to do do very well against, uh, you know, pretty good players. 
Now, I want to go bishop here, but I don't like knight e4. So let's just tighten up the ship here with b6. That's what I call Russian rules. My pawns are my pawns. Your pawns are negotiable. Okay, I don't see a direct threat. Now I'm going to touch your pawn. Although, question is why I didn't take the baby on b2. That would have been the one to take. That would have split up. Okay. Well, the reason I didn't take it is because now we're going to take the rook, but I ain't not overwhelmingly thrilled giving up that guy. Because you're still going to have some pieces coming in to visit me. But, of course, I do have a huge material advantage. So I should be able to fade the heat. Jeez, do I need to play... No, I, don't, I can't play a 5. Well... Let's go ahead and castle. I don't think that guy getting there is going to be the end of the world. I'm playing Grandmaster Dive. Okay, uh, JMW, were you able to help uh, Dylan get set up? Okay, he's pinning me. That makes sense. And I'm going to tackle this guy. Because, oh, duh, duh. Why don't we go tackle this guy? That's the guy. Yeah, his bishop is, is a good piece, but I think he's minus something. No, Dylan is just going to play on your account. Okay, sounds good. I mean, the bishop on e6 was just biting on granite, as they say, anyway. Oh, yeah, very good chess video. Talked about when you're ahead, what do you want to do? You want to trade, right? So... As long as we're not getting... We might get trapped down there. Okay. Look, all else fails. Let's just... Now, why I went there? Why didn't I go rook to d7? Yeah, the chess kid video played moves like rook to d1. And well, what was the book that they quoted? Some, uh, I don't know, from Amateur to Chess Master or some such book. And they gave examples like where you played rook down, you just trade off all the pieces when you're ahead. And, I don't know, rook e8. If I was going to unpin, why didn't I go rook d7? So at least my knight could move. And I could also contemplate doubling on the file one day. Ah, oh, well. A little sloppy here. Let's just go back here where we were. Where we were. How are we doing on time? Okay, well, now if I go up there, he's got that. Okay, let's just kill our bishop and keep him all locked in. Not very impressive how we are doing this, to be sure, but I think we will get there eventually. I just wanted to keep his knight out of e4. The downside, though, is I really did a good job boxing in my only bishop. Okay, time to move forward. Well, let's move this guy up here. And get back to what I said earlier. He's got a dark squared bishop. Let's put our stuff on light squares. Then he can't touch us. It's just taken me a while to get to it. Yeah, now I'm thinking bishop back to f7. Anyway... Wow, that's annoying. Move the bishop back. Then he can go in there. Really making a mess of this. Okay, let's go back here. Now yeah, we got all our pieces on light squares, except the three pawns on the queen side. Very proud of myself. Not. But we're going to go forward in a minute. Okay, now I think we can... Nope, one more preparatory move. And then we're going to go forward. I promise you, we will start going forward soon. Soon. Define soon, Mr. Henley. Like this lifetime? The knights cover a lot of squares, don't they? Okay, time to fight back. Whoa, I do all that, 
and then he just puts a piece there where I can eat it. Eat it. Eat it. So I didn't see Jado. Hey, Jado, do you want to get in a game, buddy? You got time for a couple more? Okay. Let's pop on down here, make sure we're not putting anything on pre. Okay. Now the C2 pawn is under heavy fire. And white position should be collapsing. No thanks to my light square bishop, which did very little this game. Oh, he's still, he's still maneuvering around. Knights are very, very tricky pieces in blitz play, I must tell you. In fact, there, why didn't I play knight takes f3 check, king g3, and then rook d1? That would have made our life a lot easier. Not a lot easier, but somewhat easier. Just make sure we're not getting our rook trapped. Yeah, I could have played knight takes and then rook there. Okay. Now, let's go here check. But wait, if we go here check, he's going to go here. He is being annoying with these knights. But rooks are supposed to be worth more knights, so eventually I'm going to get him. Eventually. Or I'll just use knight. Ah! I had a plan. Like coming work challenge. on time. Now, of course, there I could have played Rook takes Knight in 82 check. Okay, JMW, 5-0. Okay. Game started. Playing the brothers. The brothers. No point in playing E4 against them. They play the Rui Lopez themselves. So, the flip side of the Rui Lopez is Simon Williams, GM Simon Williams, that is... Or, actually, this would be like the flip side of the bishop's opening. And it's amazing. The bishop's opening after e4, e5 is one of the most analyzed games in chess. And yet, the uh, Jobava London has only come into existence in the last few years. Now, it's interesting. Jake is advising him, and he's playing something different. So what does Jake have in mind to do different here? Now, Jake before played something like c6. Now knight to g4 is very nice, but we have a little tactique. I think we can play queen takes here. Not I think we can. I know we can because I played it once before. And Simon, Simon Williams mentioned it in his video. Why do I talk about these Simon Williams videos? Well, one, he's pretty good. And two, uh, I like them. They're enjoyable. I watch them. Okay, so Good news, we stole a pawn, and we have better development. And when Ron learns to count, he'll realize he stole two pawns. Oh my goodness, you're just like letting my knight have a free double check? Check. I think you needed, guys, yeah, I think you needed to move your king somewhere, maybe c6. Yeah, this check's going to be expensive. We get check. the rook with check. And normally we would like to rescue that knight, but I don't think that's going to happen today. But let's see what happens if we double attack this guy. Who knows? Ah, they found the right move. Good, good job, guys. Okay. I was hoping to sneak that one from you. Okay, but now now I got more tricks. I'm, I'm hitting this guy. Keeping you busy. Okay, Jado and Bob Thins. If you guys want to play, well, Bob, do you have time for a game? If you do, I'll play one more. Otherwise, now here, I think we can give him the onesie twosie. We're not getting mated on the back rank or anything. McKnight's lurking in the background doing the something. Oh, whoa. Good one, guys. Trying to sneak in there. No, 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 no. Can't have that. Careful. Trying to sneak the G2 pawn and take my rook, get back in the game. Let's see. Lurking in the background, doing the 
Learning Center on stream. Excellent. The Learning Center is awesome. Okay, so Jay McKnight's is doing the Learning Center now. That bishop, we got to pin that guy. And this pin could wind up costing the brothers another unit. PP on the PP, right? Put pressure on the pin piece. That's that's what we tell the kitties. I didn't make that up. I stole it from somewhere. Check. Check. Okay, mating net's been called. Basically, I just got to put the pawn on c6 and then rook b7 mate. That's why I didn't bother taking these pawns. Don't need them. Simple plan. One more. And rook, knight, and pawn. Checkmate. Mate. And so that's why it's important to understand basic mating patterns, because especially when you get very short on time, bam, I've seen games. Incoming so challenge. One two. Okay, one more game with the boys. Game we'll started. This will be the last night of game of the night, I guess, unless uh, J. Doe. Let's go Cairo Khan. Unless J. Doe or B. Thins wants to play a game. Okay. This is called the Cairo Khan. He plays a very logical move. Knight out, protecting the pawn. I guess we'll play the old solid, super solid way. Bishop f5 is a more classical way. I played that for a while when I was young. Now there's the old track there if he played queen e2. Oh, no, guys, 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 guys. You're supposed to trade knights or move the knight, dude. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, now he's a little late with the uh, with the queen there. Oh, but he does have some ideas here, like kamikaze. Okay, so care is required. Care is required. Let's do this. Let's take a tempo there to attack that very valuable attacking bishop. I was actually a little worried. Now let's start hunkering in, defend our guy. I should probably knock that bishop out. I mean, one, I get the bishop here, and two, trades are good. Yeah, I didn't want to... Whoa! Take human bites there, guys. Okay. We're not afraid to trade. Not afraid to trade. Okay. Let's knock this guy out. Let's hit him with a check. check. Okay. We'll trade this guy. Let's get out of town. Get castled. And now he's threatening mate. Okay, guys. So I want you to learn this lesson. You two played queen d3, and you're so focused on playing queen takes pawn mate, you didn't stop to think. Ron's going to see the threat. What is he going to do? Well, he could play pawn to g6. He could play knight to f6. Knight to f6 would be a normal move. Or... His queen could take the crosstown bus and take our knight. So before you play your move, with your plan in mind, you always got to think, what's he up to? Okay, now, two extra pieces should be pretty easy. My plan now, develop my queen side. Okay, now we got a beautiful outpost for the knight. And then I want to get the bishop, either b6 and bishop b7, or, well, I like b6. b6. Helps to secure the knight in case my queen gets chased away. So even when you're doing well and everything's going very well, you constantly got to be thinking, what's your next plan? You can't just assume that positions will play themselves. That's when you get in trouble. Or that's when I get in trouble. b thin has got to run. Okay, thanks for checking in, buddy. Dave the Champ, good game. Well, thank you, sir. Okay, now that stops the immediate checkmate, but the pawn is pinned. So I'm going to go ahead and take that. Not so much that I want another pawn here, but what I really want is to strip the king open. Okay, now this Check. is going to be bad. I'm not even going to try to uh, 
I'm not even going to try to uh, uh, take that rook. Not interested in the rook. We want to go for the big game here. So I'm thinking queen check. check. Bring the king out. Do a little pawn check. fork action. Oh, guys, I thought you were going to play queen takes pawn. Okay. And what am I doing there? Now, see there? I should learn myself. I I had I played a good move, but I had a better move. Could have gone for the checkmate here. Check. Should learn from my, my own lessons. Okay. Let's cut off his king. Cut off the king. See if we can weave a mating net here. Looks pretty promising. Okay. That should checkmate. checkmate. Okay, so uh, Dave the Champ McKnight wants to play me. Uh, Dave, uh, yeah, check out his uh, his stream. I don't know if he's going to be on later tonight for sure, but it's uh, twitch.tv backslash McKnight's. So thanks to everyone for showing up and participating. Thanks to ICC and San Mr. Sandro for keeping an eye on everything and helping out uh, make sure everything runs smoothly. And we will be back next week and see you then. Have a good night.